Hey everyone and welcome back to the Engineering Toolbox channel. So I want to continue on talking about control charting and up until this point we've been working with eye charts and MR charts and we went through and we made this chart and this table with all these crazy formulas that were basically used to create this chart which conditionally formats based on the data that's entered into the table. Now this can work really well as like a template that you can just drop in any data set into and it'll automatically build this control chart for you or you can use it as kind of like a rolling template that you're going to be adding data to over time. And the nice thing about this is it'll dynamically format and build on this chart as you add data to it or if you use new data. And I want to do that same thing, but in this video, I want to talk about X-bar and R charts. And the main difference between I charts and MR charts is instead of using individual data points, X-bar and R charts use subgroup data points. So things get a little bit more tricky, but I have a really cool trick and a really cool method of subgrouping those data points very easily and then from the output of those subgroup data points we can um, do the same thing that we did here. So with that let's dive in and see how we can create an x-bar and r chart that will dynamically format just like we have here. So to create x-bar and r charts in excel there's really two fundamental ways that we could set up a table and make this work for us. Now the first way, and I guess this is kind of the more simple way to do it, is to set up our table like this where we have the subgroup, in this case I'm subgrouping by a date, and then a column for each sample within that subgroup. Now if we wanted to calculate our x-bar, all we would have to do is just take the average of each data point within the subgroup and that would give us our x-bar value. And then we could go on and uh, do our other calculations to give us the other information that we need to build our control chart. But the limitation here is that we have a fixed sample size because each data point within that subgroup has its own column. So if we wanted to change this to a subgroup of size eight, well, we'd have to add three columns. And so that can get a little bit tedious. And I'll remind you that the goal with these videos is to show you how to create templates that can work in just about any scenario. So you can just drop in your data and you know it'll work regardless of the specific scenario. So I'm trying to make this as flexible as possible. Now the alternative to that is to arrange our data like this. And the other advantage here is that a lot of times if you're exporting data from an ERP system or a quality inspection system, there's a good chance your data is kind of going to be arranged like this anyways. Now this might look a little bit odd to you and you're probably wondering how we're going to turn this information into a usable table that we can do our calculations on. But as of Excel 2016, um, there's a very cool feature called Power Query uh, built into Excel that's going to allow us to do some calculations based on a group and kind of subroute these. Now Power Query is also available for download, I believe, in Excel 2010 and newer. If it's not built into your version, check online, see if you can download it. Um, otherwise, if you're working on 16, it should be built in and you should be able to follow these instructions exactly. I'll put a link in the description for the download. But all right, that's enough explanation. Let's dive in and see how we can do this. So the first thing we want to do is select our data. And then in the data tab, if we look up here, there's this group called Get Transform Data. And this is really ambiguous. There's no way you would ever know this is here unless somebody shows you or you somehow just stumble upon it. But this is referring to some of the features and abilities of Power Query. And what we can do is get data from our table arranged. I know that's very ambiguous too, but as soon as we click that, it opens up this brand new window. And this is the Power Query editor. And in here, what we can do is we can use this button called Group By to subgroup based on the values in a column. So in our case, we're gonna subgroup by the subgroup and I'm gonna switch over to the advanced tab to give us a little bit more flexibility here. And what we can do is we can do calculations based on the other column here, um, and it'll aggregate by the subgroup. I know that might sound confusing, but um, it'll all make sense in a little bit. We're gonna add a column called N, which is the count of the data points in each subgroup. And then we're gonna add an X bar column, which will be the average of the I values in each group. And then we're gonna add an X max and an X min, now Power Query doesn't have a built-in range function um, that we can aggregate by, so what we're gonna do is we're first just gonna calculate the max of the i and then the min of the i values in each group. So watch what happens when I hit OK then. It takes our data and it collapses it, in a sense, by the subgroup values, and then it does these calculations for each value within those subgroups. So now you could probably already see that this is gonna be a lot easier to work with. So this is an important step. Make sure I hit this drop down say close and load to and then it opens up this window which gives us some options for where we can export that table to and we just want to export it to a table and we'll do it in a new worksheet 
So hit OK there, and it exports our table just like any other Excel table. So once we have this, we can do all of our calculations then to build our table that we can make this control chart from. So the first thing we probably want to do is calculate our X bar bar, which is our grand mean, or sometimes called the X double bar. So this is going to be the average of all of our X bar values. And then we can calculate the range, which is going to be the X max minus the X min. And then we'll calculate the R bar value. So that'll be the average of all of our R values. And then we want to calculate the sigma value. And the sigma value is the estimated short term standard deviation of all of our individual values. How we calculate this is we're going to take the R bar value and divide that by a statistical constant that we're going to look up from this table based on the number of uh, data points. So we're going to do a VLOOKUP and I'll just head back here and we're going to look up this N value from this table, our constant table. And we're looking for this D2 value and that D2 value is going to give us the sigma value of our individual values. So that's the third column. So we'll look up column number three and we'll do an exact match. Hit enter there and now we have a sigma value. So now what's cool about this is you'll notice that it's using the n value to calculate the sigma. So it's actually looking up the correct constant based on the number of samples in each group. So if I went back to the original data set and I deleted a row, and then I went back to our new table here and I hit refresh, which refreshes the power query. Don't mind that error it calculates a new sigma value. So I'm just going to undo that. Now calculating the control limits for X bar charts is a little bit different than calculating it for uh, an IMR chart. And the difference here is that we're working with subgroup data points. So we actually have to use what's called the standard error. And the standard error is the sigma value divided by the square root of the number of samples in the data set. Now the standard error is kind of hard to explain, but basically it has to do with the central limit theorem. Basically, because we're sampling from, let's call it a population, even though it's not technically a population. So here is, quote unquote, our population, and we're sampling five data points at a time. So this is the measure of dispersion that we would expect the X bar values to fall within. So this is a measure of the estimated short term standard deviation of each individual value based on our R bar value. So this is using that statistical constant to calculate that short term standard deviation. And then this is saying, basically what range do we expect the R bar values to fall in based on this value. I know that's kind of hard to explain, but that's kind of what this standard error value is. And this is the value that we'll use to calculate our control limits. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll add a column called X bar bar plus one standard error. And that'll just be X bar bar plus the standard error value. All right, so I went through and added those columns. And then the last thing we'll need to do is calculate the range upper control limit and the range lower control limit. And we're going to use some statistical constants from this table again to calculate that. So to calculate the range upper control limit, we're going to take the R bar value and then multiply that by V lookup. We're going to look at N and then we're going to go back to our constants table, grab the whole table, and then this will be this D4 value. And so that'll be column 10, exact match Hit enter there. And then our lower control limit is going to be the same thing except for column nine. Oops. So the D3 value here. Now this column, I was just playing around with some things, so I'll delete that. That shouldn't be in there. Um, with an X bar R chart, you always want to have at least two samples. So now this is really everything you need to go ahead and build a basic control chart. If you want to go ahead and add all the conditional formatting and all that kind of stuff, go back and watch my video on the IMR chart or the XMR chart and see how I added all the conditional formatting. It'll be all the same formulas um, to set up the helper columns and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just go back and show that quick. So you're gonna add all these helper columns all the same as, um, as we did here. It's gonna be the same exact formulas. Um, add all these columns and then you'll end up with this kind of conditionally formatted chart. But just to show um, how we can do this quick, I'm gonna hide some columns so we don't need this. Uh, we don't need the X min and max. I'm gonna take this column and move it to the end here with the other range stuff. Uh, we don't need the sigma or standard error values. So if I just take this then and grab it and insert a chart, I know it looks kind of goofy, but this is a very rudimentary version of what our control chart would look like then if we went through and um, did all the formatting. So that would be your X bar chart. 
And then for the range chart, we would just grab the subgroup here for our labels and then uh, all the range columns. So we'll just do insert, insert another line chart, and that would be um, the foundations for our range chart then. Hopefully you found this method of creating XBAR and R charts in Excel useful. I haven't been able to find another method that is this robust, so if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos on topics like this and much more. Everything from data analysis to engineering software. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.